Peter Elides with you. This is Stock Market Cycles Update for Thursday, July the 1st. Half the year is over. Hard to believe. This update is going to be done for both our normal, usual paying subscribers and we're going to make it a YouTube update also. We haven't done a YouTube update for well over a month now and we've been trying to do two or three of them per month. But uh, we, we're much more involved with our our clients are paying subscribers so uh, we've held off until we thought it might be a pretty important moment to be doing an update both for subscribers and for YouTube viewers so this is a double update for subscribers and YouTube viewers those of you by the way on YouTube who wish to become subscribers you can get a free trial both for this fabulous software and for these daily videos that we do daily virtually daily videos that we do uh, we will have a link at the bottom of today's video on YouTube for those of you that are interested in uh, looking at the free trial and becoming subscribers anyway this is such an important time for the market now and there are so many things we want to go over and we're going to do them one by one and it will probably be a long update. If you're bored, skip ahead, look for something you like or don't like. But these things are almost all very important to the current market picture. I'm going to start out with the Dow Jones Industrial Average because that's one of the indexes and averages that is looking for higher prices. The NASDAQ 100, which tends to be a market leader, the S&P 500, which has also, along with the NASDAQ 500, been going to new all-time highs over the past few days, those have met virtually all their upside projections. Yes, there's a little bit left in some of them to the upside if you look at the upper uh, projection window. But virtually all the projections have been satisfied. The NDX just missed its uh, nominal 10-week projection, the five-week offset, 24.2 to 27.6, just laying underneath it. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to show that to you also. But I want to start out with the Dow, and, and one of the reasons is a technical reason. Look at this trend line on the Dow. It begins back in March of 2020, March 23rd, at that important bottom, and the second anchor for the trend line is in late October of 2020. If you draw that trend line in on a chart, we came at virtually exactly down to it at March 4th, bounced up again, and now just happened in the last week or two, we broke below that long-term trend line. And as typically happens when you break an important trend line like that, we rallied back to it from underneath. Let me show that to you in a little more detail here with a zoom in. Okay, here is the breaking of the trend line. Here's the move back up to the trend line almost exactly on June 25th. Didn't bounce down, didn't go down, but came down a little bit. Sideways, sideways, sideways. And again today coming close to that trend line from underneath. Now that trend line should hold the Dow. The problem is that those of you that know how this software works looks as if what happened today was we got another upside projection right here let's take a look at the web chart it'll make it a little clearer okay this is a 12 1 to 13 8 offset on a daily chart the equivalent of a two and a half weeks week offset nominal five week projection and look at this it's giving a significantly higher projection for the dow and it's been confirmed. We moved above the upper side of the continuum, and it calls for prices way up to 35,726 and 35,509. So we can't ignore that. On the other hand, be aware that we do have this trend line here. I would say that based on what the NDX and the S&P caches are doing, that we may well get an invalidation of this projection. The place to watch, of course, is this trend line because if we break convincingly back above it, the suggestion is that that higher Dow projection might well be reached. Okay, there's so much to look at today. Let's take a look at a daily chart of the S&P. Okay, I'm not going to go through these shorter offsets one by one. The three and a half to four was met just in the past couple of days. 
The seven to eight, which is what we're looking at now, seven to eight day offset, nominal 20 day projection. Look at the upper side, 43.2050. Today's high was 43.2066 virtually an exact hit of that upper side of the projection and we closed right on within a point or two of that high of the day and the implication is closing on the high that there's going to be follow through strength tomorrow um, there are no guarantees for that folks the fact that we hit this projection uh, is pretty important I believe so we've hit the three and a half to four day offset uh, nominal 10-day projection. We've now hit the 7 to 8, and I'll show you because people say, well, how about the longer ones? Do we do? Uh, can't they give higher projections? Here's the 12, 1 to 13, 8. That reached its projection way down here. We did not get far enough below that projection at the time to give enough space to give us more significant upside projection. So there's no more projections available there. So as you can see, this projection is, as far as short-term projections go, that that is the highest one that we have. Now, let me show you this. And you've seen this. All of you have seen this. We've shown this to the YouTube people too. Okay, this is the equivalent of a 20-week offset, 96.8 to 110.6. And way, way back in July of uh, 2020, a year ago, this upside projection was given. Took us a long time to get up there, but we indeed got up there. And let me show you, the extend this to the right. There's the upper end of the projection, okay? So even with the longer-term projection, we're up in the upper end of the box with very little room left. The high end of this is 43.40.56. Today's high was 43.20.66, about 20 points away. So the S&P has met virtually all its projections, almost met this upper side of the normal 40-week projection, and that's telling us that we have reached a danger level in the market. The only thing that keeps me from being very, very bearish here is that Dow projection I showed you, and I don't know why. It's almost like a, a bastardized uh, projection that is not matched by the S&P or the NDX. Let's take a look at the NDX. Okay, all the longer-term projections on the NDX have been met. In fact, we did uh, a YouTube update the last one we did was back on May 7th to 10th. The NASDAQ had reached uh, its high, all-time high at that time, around the end of April. But the S&P, I'm going to go back to the S&P again and show you where we were. But look at this. This is the upside projection. This is a 24-2 to 27-6 offset, five-week offset equivalent nominal 10-week projection. Let me zoom in on that for you and show you how very close we came. We did not quite get into it. So th that's how close we came right here, yesterday's high. So is there still room? Yes, there's still room to go a little higher. But boy, you, you're, you're working uh, with cautionary flags waving like crazy here. And the quicksand is right underneath us somewhere around here very closely. So I want you to be aware of that. Okay, this is an hourly chart of the S&P, and the reason I'm showing it to you is because uh, the last time we did a YouTube update was right in here. 7th to the 10th, I believe we did it on this weekend, and we said all upside projections have been met at least on a minimal basis. So people may have looked at it at that time and said, oh, he's crazy. There's no kind of top we're going to see here. Well, indeed, this is the kind of decline we saw very quickly. And from that May 7th to 10th was a Friday, Monday. The 7th here is the 10th right here. So the update was done right in here. And indeed, that was a great call by the cycle projections because it was a market top. Now, you never know whether it's going to be a final market top or not because you can do loop projections. Loop projections occur when you 
do get a decline, and then that serves as an offset for the next rally that comes up and goes through that to give another upside projection. But that high, May 7th to 10th, as you can see, a little bit above it uh, a month later, okay, a little bit above it here a month later, and then finally, June 22nd, we start, we got above it and started rallying again. So this would, I would imagine, make a lot of people bullish because we got above what has been pretty good resistance for over a month now. But I want to show this to you because this was the last time we did an update on YouTube and showed people that all upside projections had been met on a minimal basis and it was a really good call by the cycle projections back then. Okay, so much to look at. I don't know what area to go to next. Let's take a look at Tesla. Okay, first let's show you the upside projection that's been given on Tesla. Um, here it is. We've shown this to our subscribers now for the last several days. We got virtually exactly up into that projection area. Let me zoom in on that for you so you can see it a little more clearly. Here's the projection, a tiny, tiny move above it. If we extend it right here, you can see virtually perfect on the upper end here. A little bit lower today, that median came down to the lowest the price of the last week, week and a day or two. So we, we see the possibility now of weakness in Tesla, but here's the reason why it's important. Look at this downside projection on Tesla, okay? We've shown this to you several times over the last week or two. And let's go to that very important function we have in the software, show statistics. 85.7% of the upside projections with this offset of 96.8 to 110.6 have been met over the last five years, August of 2016, July of 2021. You say, yup, but this is a downside projection. Look at this. 85.7% of downside projections have been met. It's not 100%. And obviously, this huge downside projection is very hard to believe. Uh, but it remains in effect until either met or invalidated. So that's where we stand on Tesla. And the, the cycle projections are telling us the next move of any significance on Tesla should be to the downside towards these projections. And the only way we'll distrust that projection is if we start getting higher projections to the upside. That has not occurred as yet. Okay, here's another good one. Our subscribers have seen this now for a couple of weeks. Those of you on YouTube, look at this downside projection. This is a, uh, an ETF for Bitcoin huge downside projection uh, calling for prices of between 76 cents and 7.44. Again, this is the ETF for your, for uh, Bitcoin. So uh, that's not a pretty picture right now either. This one's hard to believe also. So don't be surprised if we see some further rallies here. And if that happens, then we're going to be looking at the upside projections to see if this gets invalidated. But as of now, this projection remains in effect, and it's pretty spooky. Oh, what else can we show you? Another dramatic downside projection. Again, we don't, can't say that we trust this. And on this one, the percentages are not anywhere nearly as good as they were on Tesla. Let's look at the statistics on this. Okay, downside projections, 66.7%. So that's not bad, two out of three. But it's not the kind of high confidence we like to see. And with this same offset, 189 to 194, the equivalent to 39 to 40 week offsets, the upside projections have not been good at all, 25%. So this is not what we call a high confidence projection. But nonetheless, it's there and it remains in effect until met or invalidated. This is a gold, a gold ATF, ETF, exchange traded fund, symbol GLD, and calling for 126.09 to 134.40, current price 166.20. So there are some exciting things going on internally in the market. We're going to keep our subscribers very closely posted on a day to day basis. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the update. Our next update will be a weekend update sometime between Friday evening and Sunday evening. Thanks so much for watching.